Hi, I'm Jimbo Paris, and you are listening to the Jimbo Paris Show. All right. How's it going? I'm Jimbo Paris. Welcome again to the Jimbo Paris Show. Today we have an amazing guest, Adam McChensney, and he is a serial entrepreneur based around St. Louis. And again, he's probably one of the first people that I've had that have ever been from St. Louis. And not really quite familiar with that area, but he also is the host of the Entre Brewer podcast. And <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of going into this a bit cold. I have no idea what that podcast is about. So I kind of want to learn more about this guy. Let's bring him up. How's it going, man? Good, Jimbo. How are you? Nice, nice. And I love your uh, setup. Very um, minimalistic looking. It is. And yeah, I had actually started with my whiteboard back here. And my wife was like, Hey, I don't want a whiteboard showing all the time. So she built the barn doors to hide that up for the majority of the time. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. So kind of to begin with this, what is it that you specifically do? Yeah, so I am the owner partner at Height Digital. We are a full service digital marketing agency doing everything from logo and branding to web design, search engine optimization, and then paid ads. We are the only agency in the space that operates in a franchise model. So it's very unique. Most people are confused when I say that, but it's a franchise model for digital marketing. We combined everything that people love about working with large marketing agencies, which is data, strategies, KPIs, team members. So we have about 200 full-time employees. But we have the great things that come with also working with a small digital marketing company. So we have dedicated uh, customer service with our account managers. We have local support, even though our clients are all over the country. But we have that feel that you would get from a small boutique agency as well. So that's my main gig. I also own a couple other businesses as well and uh, also host a podcast, as you mentioned. <laughs> okay, okay. And just to know, how long have you actually been in this industry? So I've been in digital marketing since 2018. I got into it part-time back then and eventually went full-time during the pandemic in July 2020. I was in medical device sales as a sales rep for five years up until July 2020. And how would you define digital marketing? So digital marketing is really the online presence of your business that will make or break the ability for you to grow and scale automatically. So if you think about the other types of marketing and advertising that you're doing for your business, whether it's word of mouth, referrals, in-store marketing, marketing for local networking, all those things, those things are great for your business. They're the catalyst for a lot of the initial growth. And they're always great to have, right? It doesn't beat getting a referral. I get referrals in my business all the time and they're awesome, but it's not scalable to a certain degree. So digital marketing will allow your business to be automated, but also scale without you having to physically do those things that I already mentioned in your business on a day-to-day. -day. Okay. okay. Oh. And how did you sort of cultivate these skills. Can you give a bit of a history about your career and sort of digital marketing and what kind of led to the birth of Hype Digital? So I took my first digital marketing course back in 2018 when I was working in medical sales. So I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I just didn't necessarily know what avenue I would be able to do that. So I went and did a search that a lot of entrepreneurs do. How do I make money online? And I then got targeted by an ad that taught me how to build websites, rank websites. And then I took another course a year later to learn the paid advertising side of everything. So as I was doing this on the side, I built up about two years worth of case studies for different projects that I had been working on. So when I went full time, it wasn't like I was having to learn everything for the first time. It wasn't like I hadn't done projects already. So that kind of catapulted me 
right when I started the first six months, it was me doing the work. Then I started building out, you know, teams and things like that. And then I merged my agency at the time with Height Digital, um, where I'm an owner partner now. So it's been an interesting process and an evolution of where we've gone. But our agency is one of the fastest growing agencies in the entire world. My franchise specifically went from zero to seven figures in 15 months, which makes most companies much larger than us normally about five to 10 years to accomplish that same feat. Out of all these case studies, you know, which ones were your favorite getting into sort of this industry and kind of consulting other business on how to improve their digital marketing? So the one that is definitely the biggest is an auto glass company. So I built an auto glass website here in St. Louis in 2018. And the model that I used to do is I would build the websites and own them essentially as a digital landlord. And then I would rent out the calls or the leads or the clients every single month. And our auto glass one here just took off. We're the number one website on the first page of Google organically. Our Google business listing is always in the top three. And it got to a point where no one that we were giving the calls to could actually handle the business because it was five, 600 calls a month. So I actually just went out in 2021 in January and started the company. So I know nothing about Autoglass. I still to this day don't. I have an entire team that runs that business, but I own it. And it's been a great case study for us to get more Autoglass clients, but then also just clients in any industry because I'm able to say, hey, I get it as a business owner that's trying to invest in digital marketing. And not only do we do the digital marketing for our own agency, but I have another business that I created solely off of search engine optimization. So if we can create a business out of thin air from it, imagine what we can do for an already existing business. Okay. Okay. Now through all this, I'm noticing a bit of um, dry. What drove you to be the entrepreneur that you are today? And what are some things that a lot of entrepreneurs may get wrong? So for me, I was always wanting to get into medical device sales really since Mm. college. Right after college, I I got lucky enough to get in the industry. And then when I was at ResMed, which is my last company, it was the number one manufacturer of CPAP and sleep apnea equipment in the entire world. So it was an incredible company to be at. I got promoted really early on in my career there when I thought it was going to take three to five years to even see any sort of upward mobility and promotion. And I essentially went in that entry level role, making about $75,000 a year to making $200,000 in my first year as a key account manager. So I'm sitting there at 26, 27 years old. I have more money than I ever thought I would have been making at just in life, much less at that age. And so it really opened my eyes to think about what was next after that. And the upward mobility from there was more responsibilities, more travel. So I was already traveling a lot, but the next roles would be more travel for just a little bit more money. At the end of 2019, I got married and and we don't have kids yet, but we are planning to do so here shortly. I just didn't want to be that father one day that was told, hey, Adam, I need you on the other side of the country because this is what your job duty says and you're going to miss a week worth of whatever from your family. And this is to impact the company. And I, and I get all that, but I just, for whatever reason had this drive in me to say, I don't want someone to tell me where I have to be, when I have to be and why I have to be there. I want to work when I want, where I want and how I want. And so that was really the catapult after getting married and thinking about the future to be like, okay, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to make this work. I don't know how I'm going to make this work. And it was a difficult transition because I went from making all that money to not making any real money for about a year and trying to invest in the business and take off. And I invested a lot of money, time, and energy into masterminds, business coaches, mentorships, things like that, because I really quickly realized about a month into going full-time that I had no idea what I was doing. I thought I had it all figured out. The idea, the plan, all that stuff seemed like it was amazing. And then I did it and realized I am lost. And so what I think most entrepreneurs, what they don't realize or what they do wrong is they start to think that they have it all figured out. Why I figured that out in a month in that I didn't have it all figured out, I have no idea. 
But most of the time that takes people a couple of years and even maybe more than a decade to figure out as they think from the ego driven standpoint as the entrepreneur, I know how to do everything in my business. I'm great at this. The reality is we're not. And so I would say that that's probably the biggest thing. And I'm just a bit curious now at your age, why do you really think you climbed up so quickly in that um, ladder? So it was personal branding. So that's how we've gotten about 90% of our clients. So for the past two plus years, I have posted organically on my personal Facebook page twice a day, every single day. I have incorporated video content, Facebook lives. I also do the podcast, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, all those platforms now. But I do it in a way that's different from every other digital marketer for the most part that's out there. Most people use social media to either personify a life that they're actually not living and that isn't real. It might be real, but it's only like a fraction of what's actually going on in their life. Or they're trying to sell you their product or service with every single thing that they do. So they're posting twice a day, but it's a sales pitch. So my entire profile and all of my content is derived because I want to connect with my ideal end client, which is an entrepreneur, which is potentially a husband or a wife that manages, you know, relationships and being married and potentially having kids and just the ups and downs that come with being a human, but also being a business owner. So my content connects with them and tells a story. And I'm not just talking about myself. I'm talking about the highs and the lows of what entrepreneurship is and people resonate with that. And my competition for the most part, if you go to their Facebook profile, it's literally every other post is, Hey, here's why I'm so great. And why you work with me. No, no one wants to be sold. They want to see the value and they want to see that you have the solution that's going to connect to their problem. And most people don't understand that. Yeah, okay. Okay. So you hit some good points on what entrepreneurs do wrong, but most people don't want to be sold. Entrepreneurs generally come through with the idea that they think that they know everything. So coming off from what you said there, what do you think are some things entrepreneurs do well? I would say the mentality that they're not going to give up. Mm -hmm. And I think every entrepreneur, whether they're quote unquote successful or not, you know, success is, you know, different from person to person. I would say every single right. entrepreneur that I've ever met has some sort of grit in that not give up mentality, probably to a fault. There are some people that are not meant to be entrepreneurs that will drive their business into the ground because they don't want to give up, right? They're willing to dump more money into a bad investment in their company just to say that they didn't give up. And I think that that provides a lot of positivity. It could also provide some negativity, but I would say that entrepreneurs just have that grit and that mindset that they're not going to give up. I think also most entrepreneurs are visionaries. They have a lot of incredible, incredible ideas that will change an industry that will potentially change how we as humans interact with other people, if it's technology or something like that. Um, and their struggle with that, I was like tying, you know, how, how can a positive also be taken to even better? Because if you have great ideas and you're a visionary, but you know, don't know how to implement them or you don't know how to take them to the next level, then those ideas are just sitting out in space. It's how do you find yourself? For me, I found an integrator within my company about a year ago that has completely transformed our business from the processes and systems to how we train employees to how we hire and recruit but it's connecting the dots there. So I would say to kind of recap all that, it's the, the grit and the not giving up mentality combined with us being visionaries and having all these incredible ideas that really make us who we are and different from the average person. And which one do you think an entrepreneur may need more of or would do best without? Would it be the grit or more of the, the more visionary side? That's a, that's a tough question. I would say that they would absolutely need the grit and the not giving up more so than the other stuff, because all it takes is really one idea for you to really take off. And then if you have the right people in place, you don't necessarily need all of the different ideas. Sometimes our ideas are great, but a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we get that shiny object syndrome where 
we're doing well in business and we're like, what's the next thing that we need to go focus on when we, when a lot of times we just need to continue to focus on that main thing and, you know, not give up. Right. And not try to, to shift our focus. Okay. Like what was sort of your niche area? What types of people did you really specialize with digital marketing with? So we work primarily with contractors in home service based businesses, in addition oh, to okay. uh, also law firms, dentist office, chiropractors, et cetera. But we work with a lot of roofing companies, home remodelers, uh, flooring companies, tree service companies. Essentially, if the end user or their client is going to go to Google specifically and say roofer near me, dentist near me, personal injury attorney, that's where we help our clients be on the first page of Google. Wow. Okay. okay. So in a way, ho hopefully I'm not putting the wrong term here. You also do a lot of SEO specialization as well. Yes, that is correct. Okay. 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 How did you become a part of um, Inc. 5000 as, as well? Yeah, absolutely. So height, as our franchise model, you know, we have over 700 clients. So my franchise is a part of the bigger encompass that is Height Digital um, as, uh, as it stands today, right? And so Height Digital, when it first started, was struggling not necessarily to not grow, but they weren't where we're at today. So we have been able over the last three years to go from a couple different clients in a small office holistically to over 700, we have 200 plus employees. And earlier this year, we got notified that we made the Inc. 5000 list at 868, which was uh, a pretty amazing accomplishment for, for all of us and, and obviously for our clients as well. Okay. Now, now, speaking of growth as well that you've mentioned, how do entrepreneurs sort of succeed in this whole startup sector this day and age? I think a lot of it is access to information. You know, there's never been as much access to information and education as there is today. I always recommend getting into masterminds, hiring coaches to keep you accountable, like whatever that ends up being, finding a mentor, but you truly don't need that. It's great. Yes, there's a certain point where you're going to need that, but you can literally go and watch so much stuff on YouTube, go to Google, search all that stuff in. So the access to information is there. Whether or not you take action is obviously another aspect to that as well. So I think in order to be successful, you have to be willing to get access to that information, be willing to take the initiative to do it, but not just gather the information or go to the conferences or hire the business coach, but it's what you do with that information after. So you have to actually fulfill on what it is that you said you're going to do with that information and make stuff happen. Okay. Now, when it comes to sort of the clients that you've worked with, what are some of the best um, client success stories that you've had? So we work with clients all across the board, companies that are just starting up to companies that have business, been in business, you know, 25 or, or 30 years. Our best case studies have been the clients that have came to us after working with other marketing agencies that they just weren't able to get results with, or they didn't get communication back and forth. They didn't get reports. They didn't get transparency of their accounts. So probably the best story from that is a guy here local in St. Louis. He, he owns a junk removal company. He had been working with uh, a nationally recognized marketing agency, dumped a ton of money into his website, dumped a ton of money into ongoing services, but never got a single phone call or lead through his website. We've now been working with him for about two, two and a half years he was doing about $10,000 a month in revenue in his business at the time. And in two years, he's crossed the multiple six-figure mark in that period of time, largely in due to part to him taking action, but also to hiring us. And he's getting about a 10x return on his investment. When he switched away from that other company, that company said, hey, we own your website. We own all your ad accounts. They yanked it from him. And so he had nothing. So we had to build everything again from the ground up. Now he owns everything, but now he's also getting a return on his, on his investment and he owns all of his assets. Yeah. Nice. 
Now, from that experience alone, did you ever discover what drives companies to succeed? It's people. So mm -hmm. who you have on your ship to be able to actually take the business and grow it. Now, with that comes core values in the business and processes and systems to be able to automate, delegate, and elevate that. But just because you have a great idea, most of us aren't capable of being a solopreneur with no team members on our sides. Now, there's instances every which way, but most of us don't like doing everything in our business. We're not maybe as organized as someone that would be a COO or a integrator within your company, right? And so if you don't have core values in place, if you don't have processes and systems in place, hiring someone would obviously help do that, but you have to have the right people to also build those things out as well. If you don't have the right people, your business will always potentially plateau and hit a benchmark and then never push through that barrier. Okay. So I asked this question to all of the entrepreneurs, well, most of them that get on this show, and I think I already know what your answer is going to be, but um, skill set versus mindset, which is more important? Mindset. 100%. Yeah. Mind over matter every single day. You can teach the skills. You can't teach the mindset. Hmm. Okay. Great. Great. And if you could go back in time and kind of give your younger self some advice, what would you give to him? I would say take action earlier. Like I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur ever since I graduated college. Like I, I wanted to be in medical device sales, but I really did want to be an entrepreneur. I just was so scared of failing that I didn't want to take a chance going back. I'm grateful for everything that I've done. I'm grateful for being in corporate America, working in medical device sales. I truly do believe that it happened for a reason, but I would also be interested to know specifically where I would be at today. If I would have started 10 years ago. Entrebrewer. So when I heard that name, I was thinking, okay, is this guy trying to teach people how to do home brewing or is this more, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So I'm just yeah. curious. So our podcast has guests that will come on and I truly believe that every entrepreneur obviously has a unique story. They have a unique mm -hmm. background. They have a unique, whatever it is about them. And even though some people have differences and also things that are like, I truly believe every entrepreneur is so unique and different. And I have a phrase saying that entrepreneurs aren't born, they are brewed. So we walk them through a series of five questions, just going back into their history and understanding where they started, who they are, what makes them tick, what makes them uh, successful, lessons that they've learned, et cetera. And so we just bring guests on and kind of go through their journey. But along the basis of no one entrepreneur is similar to another exactly the same way. Okay. Entrepreneurs aren't born, they're brewed. I like yeah. that. Okay, I get it now. All right, that's cool. All right. What has this podcast kind of done for you? Because I know at least with my podcast, I've kind of gained a lot of insight and I kind of enjoy speaking to people like you. And what have you gained from kind of doing your podcast now? Yeah, I would say much of the similar. Like I learned something every single episode that I do. I recorded three episodes yesterday uh, in our studio and I learned something from every single one of our guests, even the guests that I've known for a very long time. I learned something new about them because I'm asking different questions, but I would say twofold. It's got me a lot more comfortable for being a guest on other podcasts. I've spoken on multiple stages this year, have a couple other speaking events. So it gives me repetition of public speaking, even though it's you know behind a microphone and things like that. But it has allowed me to open up myself, get to know people on a different level, and really just provide value, provide value to the audience, whether I'm providing value to your audience or I'm providing value through my guests to my audience. It's just been a, a very incredible experience, I would say, at, at the very, very least. But I would say life-changing as well. You know, we've had some guests. I've shared some stuff on my podcast as well that I feel like has directly impacted people's lives, which is the name of the game for me. Nice. Okay. So just a few last points. Um, 
if anyone wants to get a hold of you, kind of just provide any information, you know, on how people can kind of get some expertise from you. And also, if you have any last kind of great concluding words you'd like to give to the audience, let them know too. Absolutely. So the easiest place to find me on social media is going to be Instagram. So that's Adam L. McChesney, M-C-C-H-E-S-N-E-Y. You can also go over to adammcchesney.com where you'll find all information about the podcast, about Hype Digital, about speaking events that I'm doing, and then all of my social links for all of those platforms. The biggest piece of advice that I would leave for an entrepreneur or anyone listening to this is that you need to be yourself. So I just call it be you. As you progress in life, you obviously have ideas of what you want to do and you have places you want to go. And it's very easy to lose yourself in that process. And I've been there before I got really clear on what it is that I was trying to accomplish in my mission in life and also what I needed to do in order to be successful. Most people try to be someone that they are not to either impress others or live a life that they feel is worth living because of someone else. <laughs> so to summarize all that, be you and be proud of that. Like that's what is ultimately going to set you apart and has done so consistently for me in my business, my personal brand, et cetera. Great. Powerful words. All right. Well, this has been an excellent conversation. I really enjoyed this. Thank you again for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, Jimbo. I appreciate it. It was a great time. Nice. So just to quickly um, wrap this up, a few shout outs. First person down below, LifeWork Systems. This is our affiliate collaborative partner. She basically has a business and she partners and collaborates with other businesses to sort of improve their business and HR infrastructure. So if you have a medium to large size business and you're dealing with a lot of issues within concerning relationships, and remember, he said people are the biggest factor to business. Talk to this woman below. Reach out. Next thing, a uh, YouTube channel, subscribe now to us. We're slowly getting some more subscribers, but subscribe to us below and kind of ring that bell because you can get exclusive updates because we do a show every single week. And then the final thing, well, close to final thing, our Roku channel. Um, this will be on Roku as well as our other shows. Yes, we have a podcast, but we're also a TV channel as well. So look at us there, get a Roku box, not just for this show, of course, but you know. The last thing, Jimbo Paris Services. We are currently working with corporate business General Electric now. We are doing marketing and also making content for them too. So if you want any advice on consulting, any advice on building content, reach out to us. We can kind of help you key in on sort of that target audience that you may need to attract. All right. I'm Jimbo Paris, and this is the Jimbo Paris Show. Thank you for listening to the Jimbo Paris Show. 